Okay, another example with the general Cauchy integral formula. Uh, let n be a non-negative integer, natural number is zero. We're to find an f of z to be z squared minus one to the nth power. Then we'll scroll back up and look at uh, the general Cauchy integral formula, make sure things match up. Uh, they do, though they've done some moving around of some of the variables. So here's what we're taking for f of z. We're saying the nth derivative of that function equals n factorial over 2 pi i integral over c, where c is a simple closed contour containing z, of s squared minus 1 to the nth power over s minus z to the n plus 1. So I want to match that up with Cauchy's integral formula. Left-hand side's an nth derivative. Right-hand side, he's got s's in it instead of z's. Okay, so what they're doing is they're taking the z's given here, replacing them with s's down below, and this z sub zero quantity, and they're replacing with z. So they're substituting for both variables here, still using the general Cauchy integral formula, but what we're getting is uh, f of s in the numerator, that's f of s, right, because there's f of z, so replace the z with an s, produces the numerator, uh, with, we're in the Cauchy integral formula, we're integrating with respect to z, and we see a z down here. And here we're integrating with respect to s, so we need an s down here. The general Cauchy integral formula has a z sub zero there. We're replacing that with a z. And on the right-hand side, we've got an nth derivative in terms of z. So we got z's here and here. In the statement of the Cauchy integral formula, they have z sub zeros in those two positions and we're integrating with respect to s instead of with respect to z. So it's still a general Cauchy integral formula. The, the parameters, the variables have just been jumbled around a little bit. Okay, uh, we wanna express it in this form because uh, something called the Legendre polynomials, um, a set of polynomials that um, get this, they form a basis for a solution space. It's some differential equations. Uh, so applicable stuff. We're just going to go through and see what uh, one of the values of the Legendre polynomials are. We're going to evaluate these at, at one. Uh, Legendre polynomials are defined as follows. P sub n of z, so it's a collection of polynomials indexed by non-negative integers. 1 over n factorial, 2 to the n, nth derivative with respect to z of z squared minus 1 to the nth power. That's our f of z. Uh, that's actually the derivative part. That's the left-hand side of this thing. So we can tie the Legendre polynomials into integrals of this form. So that's the reason it really comes up in this setting. So if we wanted to take p sub n of z, we can rewrite it as, let's see, we get this uh, 1 over n factorial 2 to the n stuff up front. The derivative stuff can be replaced with all of this by the general Cauchy's integral formula. So we're taking the derivative part, replacing with all of, replacing it with all of this. All right, that'll give us a one over n factorial two to the n times this stuff. Hey, there's an n factorial in the numerator here, denominator there, we can cancel those. That'll leave us with a one in the numerator, uh, two to the n, there's another two, so we get two to the n plus one. The pi i is right here, and here comes the integral part. So p sub n of z can be written in this form. All right, uh, where we're taking c to be a positively oriented simple closed contour around point z. <clears throat> we're gonna set z equal to one in a second, so we'll have a more tangible idea um, less variables of what's going on. We're going to evaluate um, the Legendre polynomial at one is the idea. Okay, um, this integrand, let's see, if we let z equal one, then we're looking at x, s squared minus one to the nth power over s minus one to the n plus one power. This is what the integrand is if we set z equal to one, like we're going to do. Uh, hey, s squared minus one, that's s minus one times s plus one. 
So we can factor that. Now we've got an S minus one to the nth power in the numerator. We've got an S minus one to the n plus first power in the denominator. So we can cancel all but one of those, leaving us with an S plus one to the n over S minus one. Meaning we can take this integral and when z equals one, rewrite it as an integral of, of this quantity. Okay, and that's exactly what we have here. So we've replaced the integral of this function with the integral of that function. And in so doing, we've let z equal one. That's how we were able to factor up here and get things to simplify. So that's why we're considering one from a practical point of view as well. Okay, well now I wanna correlate that with Cauchy's integral formula or maybe Cauchy's general integral formula. Uh, we've got a, an exponent of one in the denominator. So it's sounding like the Cauchy integral formula instead of the general Cauchy integral formula. Uh, I'd have an exponent of two or greater if we were using the general Cauchy's integral formula in the denominator. Numerator, kind of almost anything goes if you've got a nice analytic function. But if we'll let f of s be s plus one to the n, and we had done that above, if we had z's before, but then highlighted in blue, you've got the f of s function. In the denominator, we've got an s minus z, where, where z equals one. We know by Cauchy's integral formula, previous section, that we can relate that integral to two pi i times the function value, or if you wanna plug in n equals zero to the general Cauchy's formula, then I've got a denominator to the zero plus one power and we've got the zero derivative, but that is just the function itself. So it's a little cheap to call this an example using the general Cauchy integral formula because it's really just Cauchy's integral formula. Anywho, uh, so we're taking the f function and we're plugging the z into it. Here we've taken z to be one. So if I replace z with a one that produces one here, produces uh, two pi i uh, f of one. Here's f. f of one would be one plus one to the nth power. So substituting in the little, little things in parentheses or things I've substituted, z equals one. <clears throat> and okay, we've got uh, two to the n, there's an extra two out here that gives us two to the n plus one pi i. That's the value of the integral. We were looking for the value of the function. We peek upstairs, we had p sub n of one is one over two to the n plus one pi i times this integral stuff. We just found out the integral stuff is two to the n plus one pi i also. So substitute in, we've got one over that quantity, the integral is that quantity, cancellation, and we get out one. So was the nth Legendre polynomial evaluated at one is one. There's an uh, exercise in the book where they have you show the nth Legendre polynomial evaluated at negative one is negative one to the n. So it's plus or minus one, depending on the even or oddness of n. Uh, the derivation of that and that exercise would be quite similar to this. We do a little bit of substitution somewhere down here. Uh, and at this stage, we'd be substituting in a, a negative one. I guess, and we might have some factoring upstairs that goes differently, but overall it's, it's quite similar to this example. So there's an intro to um, the general Cauchy integral formula. Uh, we, we haven't seen the last of it. It'll pop up in the future when we look at, uh, at more, more at integrals and when we look at series as well. I'll see you in the next section.